Hi, I'm Anvesha, and welcome to the first episode for our video blogs for Innovation On. Today with me, I have a very special guest who is also my friend from the Wolfram High School Summer Camp. Um, we have Pedro Cabral with us. Uh, would you like introducing yourself, hey. Pedro? Hi, um, my name is Pedro. I was uh, also an alum alumni for the summer camp, and I do programming competitions. I do some rocket science. I do research on an astrophysics on a cosmology laboratory here in my city in Brazil, and yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Like I remember at the camp that you were very enthusiastic about what you were doing, and I'm not sure if I got all of your projects, but it seemed pretty cool. So we'll mm -hmm. go with that. So we'll start with the first question. They're very well framed questions, but the answers can be pretty un informal. They just like have to be like a conversation. So you work as a researcher and a data scientist at the Laboratory of Astrophysics and Cosmology. Cosmology. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about the research that you do and how did you get involved with this lab? Oh, okay. So the, the, the main research that I'm doing is about the correlation between the infrared emitted by the stars and the abundant abundance of lithium in, mm -hmm. present in the stars. So we're trying to find the correlation between those because we think it's a, a common event of high, high infrared emitting stars mm -hmm. having lots of lithium. So we believe mm -hmm. that there's a correlation and a, 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 cause, a cause for that. So mm -hmm. we are researching on that. We are gathering about, se uh, actually, exactly 7,272 7, stars. We do massive pipelines using the Wolfram language and other languages like Python. Uh -huh. That sounds really cool. So uh, like, Trying to establish this correlation, has this also been tried by people from another country or another university? Or is it just like the guys at your lab are starting with this concept like completely afresh and this is a very new concept that you guys could probably establish in the future? So who started so who started the, the research is my my professor, my the director of the lab. Mm -hmm. And he he thinks as a wise professor that there might it's a interesting thing to study mm -hmm. but it's science so if there's no correlation or neither cause there is no correlation or neither cause we can't force that mm -hmm. event to happen yeah so we're studying it for the positive and there it is and we're studying for the negative we're researching mm -hmm. for no there isn't so that and neither in like both cases it's going to help science, but mm -hmm. only if both cases exist. Yeah, like that sounds really cool that you guys are doing something that is completely original, you could really contribute to the field because that sounds like really awesome to me. So how many people like work on the team? About seven people, me, actually eight people, the, the mm -hmm. professor, me and a group of other six students. So you're the youngest? Yes. And how many years Actually, ago did he only start? One from, from the high school. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how many years ago did he start with this lab? And also, like, how did he get like, in touch with this professor and start working? Oh. So I got into the laboratory about one year and six months. So mm -hmm. I got with, a, with a, a parent of mine. I was at, I was at a, uh, a party at a, at a, in a house of uh, my cut my auntie and she was like oh I have this I, I have someone I want to show you and I saw a tattoo in his arm saying 42 I said is that a reference to the hitchhiker's guide to galaxy and he said yes have you ever read that read that I said yeah I had what do you do and he says oh I do <clears throat> I do um, a minor on astrophysics and cosmology, a major in physics in the Federal Institute. Um, what about you? And I said, oh, I'm in high school still. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, oh, I do some research in Atera. Um, what do you want to do? I want to do computer science. And he said, like, oh, do you understand about programming, etc.? I said, yeah, sure. Like, I, I code in Python, I code in this language, mm -hmm. that language. 
and I can do this, this, this. And he showed me what what they worked with. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I work with Python and I do this and that for this research because mm -hmm. we can't do manually processes on these this amount of data. It's mm -hmm. too much for a manual process. We need to automate that. And I do understand about Python, like he was saying, but I can't manage to figure this out. So I figured it out, like how it's made. And oh, that's, I, I, that's really cool. Yeah, I went on going to the Federal Institute and giving lectures for the professor mm -hmm. and the six other students. And yeah, we are doing research for about one year and six months. That's really cool. Like I already had an idea of like how exactly like what you were doing, like your lab setup in general, but it's still really amazing to like hear the whole story. I'm sure we still didn't cover a lot of parts of the lab experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we can get to that. Well, <laughs> probably we would very soon throughout the interview. So how popular is research amongst um, high schoolers in Brazil? No, it's definitely <laughs> not a popular thing. Because uh -huh. in fact, there's not no, there's not a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was pretty much luck. Like it was a yeah. really really a, a really scenario of luck, like mm -hmm. pure luck. Yeah, I like, like I, I think completely relative mm -hmm. that does research and needs help on computer science for processing data. Yeah, that's really hard, and there's pretty much no incentive. Like there's nothing for research on mm -hmm. high school. Yeah, I can pretty much relate to that too because like I work at an institution that is pretty well known throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Um but yes, like I'm still the youngest and probably the only one from high school ever doing it. Um and sometimes like in my lab people still don't believe that I'm 16. People think it's like a big hoax that me and the professor and my graduate like mentor patched against the other lab mates and they still like think I must be 20 at least so yeah, that's same, fine same and i i let it go that way like if they like me better thinking that i'm 20 years old sure why not so how hard it is to find a mentor who would take you in into the lab considering your age so like before you got this internship how do you ever try to reach out to any professors and be like i would love to work with you or something like that like finding it's no I haven't like I haven't searched for anything there's mm -hmm. there's not even a place to start with like mm -hmm. it's a really close thing it's only if you were a student of a, of a, a college a public college or mm -hmm. in fact a, a private college a private institution that mm -hmm. has the the budget to do research because mm -hmm. mainly uh, public institutions don't do research at all because they mm -hmm. don't have the funds for it mm -hmm. so it's if I'm not like uh, a student of it, there, there, it's game over. I can't even like say, oh, I, I can I do an interview, so mm -hmm. I can like be maybe a candidate. No, they're just not mm -hmm. opportunities. Yeah, all. because um, I, fortunately for me, I got into this game of trying to do research very early, and um, mm -hmm. towards the starting for the first two years, I just ended up cold emailing a lot of professors and never getting like responded back to. And then after two years, when I was in the ninth grade, like I just got lucky and one of them replied back. <laughs> and uh, it's just like completely luck based. And you just need to keep trying. And nobody really understands as a high schooler, what is it to do research? They're like, Oh, you must yeah. be doing some kind of like science model. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing a science model. Like I'm doing research. And um, yeah. I think it would relate to this very well. Like it's so unexpected out of a high schooler. Yeah. We're doing yeah. what they're doing right now. And often I think this can also mess up with the social situation. Like, do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> no, but I have something interesting. So when I, when I, I, I mean, pretty much every day I go there, um, there are some security, like they, mm -hmm. they monitor the entrance and, mm -hmm. and the exit of the students. So I have a, 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 per, a, a profile there that says that mm -hmm. I'm, I, these days I go these, these, these times and for the astrophysics lab. So mm -hmm. I just get my ID and say like, hi, I'm 
Pedro Cabral and I are going to do research right now on the astrophysics mm -hmm. lab. And they look at me and they look at ID and they like, hmm, should I allow him to enter? I, he seems too young for me. What are you doing here? Are you, mm -hmm. are you a student here? I said, no, I'm not a, a, a college student. Mm -hmm. Like, no. And he said, so what are you doing? I'm going to do research. Please, can you get my profile? And so I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, there's there it is. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty funny, and it must be hard to face the situation like almost every day. Um, yes. But yeah, yes. like, have you ever found it hard to like talk to people of your own age who would understand what you're trying to do, or do you just like try to ignore that even, part of you yeah. altogether? I pretty much don't even try to talk. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I I just give up. Like, they're not going to. Yeah, like, yeah. No, not even, not even be interesting. It's like, it's, it's like a hobby. It's yeah. Like, oh, I like this. I'm like, the, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Like, I think you would agree to this because I faced a very similar situation where none of my mm -hmm. like classmates would be able to understand what I was aiming for. Um, mm -hmm. So you would think that summer camps do like change the situation altogether because like suddenly you're thrown in with like 40 other people who mm -hmm. do, most of them did research, like especially at our yes. camp and like everybody oh, is just like so enthusiastic to talk about what they do and they come from so many countries. Um, in fact, like in this blog, I also interviewed another guy from Tunisia and it was really amazing to see like he faces a very similar situation that I face here. And then I'm also hearing similar things from you. So that is very wonderful to see. And um, I think like going to summer camps would probably be a game changer for a lot of people. What would you say? Yes, it is. It is a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's the, the compliments like with people that work, that people, people that have uh, international medals on an Olympiads, people that um, have programs for like helping people go mm -hmm. to college and help people um, uh, looking for to people that are looking forward for STEM activities and like uh, experimentation and programming laboratories for, for computer science, um, lecturing for their friends or like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, because it, um, I feel like as a young high schooler, sometimes I just felt like, a bit not like fitting in and then I went to my first camp uh, two years ago and it was like a complete blow to me and I was probably one yeah. of the happiest people and the best part was when I came back I just knew like better on how to reach out to people and that is when I started innovation on so because yeah. initially I felt that I was the only one who was trying to do it and then after coming back from the camp I felt like yes nobody else is doing it but I could help somebody else to get into it and um mm -hmm. That has definitely been an experience. So I like the idea of talking about like the summer camp experience a bit because none of our countries really had their own summer camps or summer schools or anything. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's a good thing to cover in this interview. So we'll go back to the thread that we were following before and okay. talk a bit about your research. So you have yeah. authored two scientific articles. Um, and I actually don't oh. know what they're about, but I just read it on your profile um, and you mentioned it to one, me before. The, I, so can you tell us a bit about it? Okay, the first one is the infrared, uh, the correlation between infrared emitted by the stars and the abundance of lithium. And the second one was this opportunity uh, in researching about, about the, the, in the astrophysics laboratory gave me another opportunity to to do research on psychology. So I have mm -hmm. an article, not having an article, I have a, a draft, but it's a, com a, a, a complete article. Mm -hmm. um, it's not published yet, that's mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's a complete article on the influence of the, uh, the, the electoral period here on Brazil mm -hmm. in people's dreams. So mm -hmm. what I did was use the Twitter API to mm -hmm. fetch an amount, amount, uh, an, an, a huge amount of data for tweets that had, um, I had a dream that some some polit some politic politician like I had a dream a dream that some politician 
Mm -hmm. um, we fetched all that data for like for all the candidates for all the periods we searched for words and we got like some really great conclusions mm -hmm. like about how people subconsciously think about the politicians like mm -hmm. they they we we analyzed a pattern like if someone was uh, against a politician it will sound it will have negative words like mm -hmm. there's an there's an extremist politician that people that were against him mm -hmm. usually said like he's he was trying to kill me he was killing someone and some some cops were shooting at, at he, uh, that and that and some um unnatural events yeah mm -hmm. we we have concluded that people had more more um, nightmares with people that disrupted more the 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 government idea like we want to change and we want to change um, people had more nightmares with that um people had more nightmares with um the left actually right wing with the right right wing parties because they are more pro guns so yeah we got some really groundbreaking mm -hmm. uh, insights but in fact it's it's a it's it's not published and mm -hmm. we might just rethink about the ethnicity um of the article because somehow we got the data without the consent from the people mm -hmm. from twitter yes we did but not for the people so we might just do the research again uh -huh. that that I actually faced a very similar situation two years ago so I was very new into psychology but I love the mm -hmm. subject and I did a study on how our perceived usage time for a device may vary from the actual usage time of a device mm -hmm. and because I was young and new to psychology I kind of missed on the IRB permissions <laughs> and uh, like I asked for the consent and like my school's consent but then we like, the official paperwork is probably not complete. And then, like, I'm repeating the project after two years because I was heartbroken then uh, by the fact that my project yeah. didn't work. Um, but it's wonderful to, like, see that you're doing something very similar and in the same line. So that's really, mm -hmm. really fascinating yeah. to see. Um, in, in fact, like, there's no people in the... Okay, so I this research was not conducted by the Federal Institute so that I mm -hmm. do work in yeah. the astrophysics and cosmology mm -hmm. laboratory, but rather the 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 public federal university. Um, and there is no people that work there. There's no people that work with computer science like mm -hmm. at all in the in the psychology sector. So. Mm -hmm. It's like a really big thing for them. Like there's no knowledge about computer science in the area of, of the psychology. Like, mm -hmm. like this, this work with data and like work, work with, with API crawling, mm -hmm. like, like, yeah, it was really, really crucial. Mm -hmm. And so there, like, there's, there's no knowledge mm -hmm. on computer mm -hmm. science. Yeah, because I work currently in a cognitive psychology lab and people mm -hmm. do code there a lot. But before I joined, I was still like doing some computational behavioral science work and uh, I was also using APIs. And uh, if you saw my project at the camp, you know that I'm interested in Twitter data in general. It was an emoji yeah. user. Yeah, so yeah. even after that, I've been getting lots and lots and lots of tweets. So I've read a lot of them over the past six months or so. So another interesting thing was have you faced any specific challenges being so young trying to publish an article? Because when I was trying to publish like my first paper, I got back a lot of emails that referred to me as Dr. Das. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm a high schooler. I'm not a doctorate. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. So thankfully, I'm not alone in the process of publishing it. Especially oh, okay. because uh, I have a professor and almost, and for the psychology article, almost a doctor, like a, a master. Uh -huh. um, and they are like doing the process of publishing it. But I believe that it's pretty much impossible for like a Brazilian journal to accept it. Mm -hmm. um, especially because I did help with a, with a master's thesis, with a master's yeah. um, uh, a conclusion project mm -hmm. 
conclusion of work to to like do a systematic review mm -hmm. lit, liter literature systematic review mm -hmm. on the the teaching of physics using arduinos mm -hmm. in fact it's it's really efficient and really great really stem focused mm -hmm. activities to like study physics with arduino and yes it's, it's just about like this really closed group like mm -hmm. this really close the group of people that are in a college and and they are monitored by the uh, math by masters like professors mm -hmm. and those professors have like had have, have friends that are doctors mm -hmm. and uh, so i i got an opportunity in fact for doing the the psychology research mm -hmm. only just because i had the opportunity to get inside one research so, mm -hmm. so if i had no no opportunity at all i couldn't do any of the three works yeah it's, it's like a chain reaction i have experienced yeah. something similar but i will i'll tell you that someday later like this interview is about you not about me so we'll talk about that later but definitely i've seen the chain reaction take place and recently mm -hmm. i've had the opportunity to do something very cool which i never expected i would be able to do but yeah we'll talk about that after the interview so we'll move on to a different segment of the interview it's more like your general mm -hmm. opinion in society so do you think that success in school may be somehow related to how you perform as a researcher no no um maybe on words like um, recently, I did an overkill in my biology, mm -hmm. in my biology um, semester work. So mm -hmm. we were supposed to do like a, a, a project group, and we did a review on a, an article. Like mm -hmm. we did use LaTeX for formatting. We used the, the, a real English article. We tried to replicate some of the, the chemical some of the chemical reactions using a computer software. And I, I teach to my friends on my class for like how to do it. And yeah, it was a work here. And in fact, I got an, a, like an A plus, a 10 out of 10 in the, mm -hmm. in the project. But it, I believe that in school, like inside the class, no. So especially Brazil, because Brazil has a really industrial education type. Mm -hmm. It's focused on, on results, not on the, the, the course. Like mm -hmm. of the the student. So, what is the student doing? What is he? What does he want to do? What is he? Where is he going to? Mm -hmm. um, everything is really, really um, useful. Like physics, people say, like, why am I teaching? Why am I learning physics? Physics is really cool. But I, I do an analogy analogy with um, vectors. Mm -hmm. There is magnitude, but there is no direction. It's not even a vector. Mm -hmm education needs to be a vector because it needs to have a magnitude and a direction where you want to go. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great way to put it. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you hunt for ideas for your projects? And do you have any favorite like source of inspiration, like a special oh. magazine or a website that you absolutely love related to STEM and you would like to mention it here? So mm, kind of like, I don't have a, like a main resource, but I, I get something like um, maybe a problem. Like recently I wrote a, um, on my website, mm -hmm. a tiny, tiny uh, a formula deducing for getting a, a, the, the ratio between a parabola inside the, mm -hmm. a, a hexagon. Like what is the, what is the, what, what do you, what do you get if you divide the area of a, of a hexagon Mm -hmm. and the area of a, 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 a parabola inside mm -hmm. the hexagon mm -hmm. and I got 0 0.4 and mm -hmm. I showed to my friends and they were like oh what what did you what did you do to get that and I I just like I just thought of it I just thought of a parabola in a hexagon and for for general resources I just get a problem like I try to do an idea around it I do I try to to, to get a solution for that um, some something in in in, in um, new research. So mm -hmm. there are some some new types of um, generative adversarial neuro, neural networks. So I try mm -hmm. to work around them and like do some neurosurgery to produce new types of GANs. Like I do have a, a tiny GPU here, 
it takes a, a few hours, but I have a model and it's, it's kind of for fun. Like there's no intent in my projects. It's pretty much just for fun. Like, yeah, pretty much everything that I, that I read, I read articles and I get ideas. I read that and those like about chemistry, about computer science, about psychology, about this, mm -hmm. that simulations and et cetera, models, modeling physics. Et cetera. Mm -hmm. That that's really cool. So, um, so in objectively, yeah. objectively, papers, real life, mm -hmm. Twitter, like social interaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think social interactions are a great way to get ideas because, like, yes, I've been yes. into human behavior research, and I literally sometimes just go and observe people, and I'm like, yeah, that's what he said. That's very yeah. interesting psychologically. Some of my friends hate me for that, but it's fun yeah. in the end. Um, and I get to do yeah. some like cool stuff with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about real life. Like there's uh -huh. no such thing in, as an ideal system. Like yeah. ideal system are for ideal conditions, like no air, no air resistance or mm -hmm. neither friction. So yeah, problems, okay. they're real life. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So you also mentioned that you have a website. So do you want to like tell the link here? I because oh, yeah, I sure. I don't think I have visited your website, and I'm ashamed of that. Um, no, definitely. I do have some some stuff in Portuguese. I mm -hmm. have no con at all in English, but I I publish some ideas there, some drafts there. I do my website has like the the front page. You have a link for my library, and I do some translations of a few mm -hmm. open source books. Um, I do some citation on books. I do some opinions, like a really personal thing. Of mine. So, so do really you want to send me the link like after this interview so that I can also put it up in the description box? Yeah. Just like about you so I can like put a bit of stuff like possibly like your Wolfen page or something like that. It's going to be fun. So for, for you, you fellows that speak English. So I am in the process of of integrating like i'm changing for a static website model to like uh, mm -hmm. a thing running in a server mm -hmm. like uh and yeah there is going to be the articles both in portuguese and english mm -hmm. um but not in the moment but yes you can can stay tuned for the english yeah. version of the website i i surely will uh and i hope that our viewers will too otherwise for the time being i'm gonna use translator and still yeah. read all the stuff that you post because I'm very curious to know what's going on there. So we're gonna conclude this interview with the last question. Um, mm -hmm. Is there an interesting, possibly goofy fact about you that we might not know otherwise? Hmm, an interesting fact. Mm. I mean, about Goofy, maybe that I, I think like this way, I think like looking at other objects, but rather thinking about the, the, the subject. Mm, there is, but I just can't remember. Like, <laughs> there okay. maybe is, no. Because you, um, to me, like come out as a pretty humorous person. And I wanted to see like, if you have a very goofy habit of yours, like for example, I've done some stuff that doesn't okay. really make any sense, uh, yeah. but it's fun anyway. I do sometimes, um, like I do sometimes count on, on, on fingers, like what, what, I, what was I trying to remember? And then I start like, okay, I, I need to talk with that person and I need to like do this and do that. Uh -huh. And people just like, people just see like, <laughs> so, so I would like count on fingers uh -huh. and people for, for like remembering stuff and people would just be like, is that a guy counting? Like, what is he doing? Oh, also like, I remember a really goofy thing that he did from camp, like about the mm -hmm. typewriter sound from your keyboard. Yes. The typewriter sound. Yes. So, so backstory is that I, uh, my computer, I use Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, a, a friend of, of our common group mm -hmm. that is, uh, she also used Linux. And I said like, oh, there's a command you can use to make your keyboard sound like a, a buckle spring keyboard. Mm -hmm. It's buckle. 
and you just do this to install. It's like one line. You just type buckle, and the computer starts doing buckle spring sounds. And I just like, no, I'll give me your computer. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember because uh, the girl you're talking about was my roommate, yeah. and I could hear her at like 3 a.m. piping away oh. with the buckle sound. <laughs> you introduced. <laughs> No, uh, obviously. Yeah, I caused okay. that. <laughs> yeah, you did. So, yeah, I think that was definitely a very interesting fact about you. You like typing in the buckle sound. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll conclude the interview now. I just feel like there's a lot of stuff we could still talk about. And who knows, we might even do another interview soon if you have the time. Yeah. And you're able to coordinate. So, thank you so much for joining this episode today. It's been great. Really like. Glad. The smile is genuine. Like, I'm literally smiling after the <laughs> interview. <laughs> so, thank you and bye. So, bye -bye. send me the link. We will definitely yeah. be calling soon. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>